Welcome back to Express to Orbit episode two. So last time we in three launches managed to do first launch, common line contract, 2000, sorry, 3000 kilometer downrange and suborbital return. Um, and we did an interesting little two part sort of final flight where we did two missions in one go. Again, I will repeat, if you want to, if it's a little bit too much for you, because you have to be very precise for that one, it can be a bit finickety, um, do that as two flights. You have the Kerman line contract craft that we actually use that would complete one of those and you could strip out extra weight from the uh, from the 3000 uh, kilometer downrange craft. So we've got a big chunk of money. We've got this vessel building, which we're actually gonna cancel. So we're gonna scrap that. We're actually going to accept, uh, we're gonna put money into our mission control. It's 25,000, it's quite a lot, but we're gonna do it now. And then we're gonna have a look and it will show us that that takes 181 days. That's important, we have gotta remember that. Why am I thinking about 181 days? Because there's a little interesting thing here. If we decide to go for one of these scientific contracts, if we choose a first scientific satellite, it will automatically accept first artificial satellite even if it takes us over our two contract limit which means we can select one of these and then this and get a double bump so let's actually look at these these need to be completed by 1954 1954 so we're going to take those but before we take them we want another contract that we want to be able to get on with now we could do a uh, a low space biological experiment that would be a, a nice sort of start for us. It'd be something we could do. Um, they pay reasonably well. We could also do low space film return. That gives us potentially a nice big chunk of cash when that comes. The balance here is, and this is what this episode's gonna be about, you get to make that decision. What I tend to do is I tend to do all three of the low space biological experiments and two of the low space film return experiments before I then go and actually build my final craft here because I tend to find it gives me the funds to do everything. However, I also find that in amongst that you may want to do two or three of these other missions. So we've got downrange distance ones here and we've got sounding rocket sort of altitude missions. So you've got this one here that is 60 units of payload uh, to 190 kilometers and we've got another one here and i'm always looking at the difficult ones that is let's have a look we've got uh, 430 units for 350 kilometers downrange now there's a reason why you might choose to go for one of these first their their timing has been kicking on since we did our common line contract we've been adding time to these and these are 90 day reset contracts so if we do one it's actually gonna have time to refresh. So I'm actually looking at this one and going, yeah, what I would tend to do is I would take one of these, possibly two because they, I think they're actually separate. You can actually do the down range and then you can do the altitude one and the, and the 90 day cooldown isn't linked. And you can interspace them with these while you're doing it. And it means you can get your biggest bang for your book. Don't just do you know one after the other of one of these, move them around a bit and use these fixed ones because these do not go up or down in value at all. Um, use those in between. So we're going to choose this one first. It's going to be a bit of a bigger rocket. It's going to be that there, primarily because it's going to give us a big chunk of money to start with and a little bit afterwards. Whereas this one is about half as much. Plus we've got that hundred and something days we've got to wait anyway before we can do our next mission. So we can actually do this one, start building the next craft, and we, we don't have to basically, uh, we don't, we're not tied in too much to it. So we're going to take this downrange distance contract. There we go. And we should be able to complete this using pretty much the first stage of our 3000 kilometer downrange craft. So that'll be, that'll be wonderful. We'll take that. And then we're going to take our first scientific satellite. So there we go. Wait until all those things have gone. This one's going to vanish. There we are. Right. We're going to take this one as well. It may seem a bit odd taking that one and, and not the first artificial, but if we take this, let's just see this. There we go. You can now see we've got three active contracts instead of out of the max two. It's a little cheaty, I know, but it's because of the way they've been written. And, you know, we're trying to get through this quickly. We've also got a big chunk of fun. So let's go prepare a craft for doing this downrange contract and uh, decide what to spend our funds on as well. 
welcome to the VAB and you will find us with the Argon 3 SR or sounding rocket and you will see it is pretty much our Argon 3 but with uh, with the top section removed and we've basically just put on this top unit which is for sounding payload so that's that um, I'm using this as the default size one here of 1048 uh, which is the, the I always number my my sounding rockets so I know what their maximum capacity is in case I have to retool tanks and things like that but what we can actually do is we can have a look at our contract and go right what's it need to be and we'll just bring it down to whatever the requirement is 430 so we'll do that nice and easy if you don't know how to do that go into tank UI and then you're just going to change this to a 430 I like so update it and you'll notice the uh, delta V changes very nicely so now that's what we're going to do we'll save that uh, we'll tool it there we go tool all now that's going to cost us a 400 740 not much um and we'll start building that there we go where are we start building that thank you very much um i could rename it i'm not going to but we know that that's the craft we want to use for this so let's go back to the main screen all right, so here we are back on the main screen and there's a few things we want to do. First of all, I want to collect that because that's going to get annoying in a little minute. We've upgraded our mission control. We've got a lot of funds available. We're going to need about 166,000 to actually put up a craft to do orbital for us. So, so we need to keep that in mind. But remember, we're speed running. So what are we going to do? Well, I want a 60 ton pad. We currently don't have a 60 ton pad. So first of all, I'm going to rename this to uh, LC1 and I'm going to call this 20 ton because uh, I like to remind myself what the actual pads are. We're going to create a new one. We need a we need a 60 ton pad because, well, we're going to need to launch a bigger rocket if we're going to go to orbit. So we need to we need to get that sort of built now. And you will see it will take 500 days at the moment, but we're going to be we're going to be less than that soon. So that's the thing. And what I will say is you could also go into the astronaut complex and fire your astronauts. However, they shouldn't actually retire by the time we go orbital. And if you go really quickly, you can actually sometimes get them to fly your orbital, uh, your orbital capsule missions, things like that. So it's up to you. If you want to fire them, just remember you have to pay for them again later on when you're going to hire them. But you should have money for that. So it's not going to be an issue. Right. So we're now down to 600,000. Well, what else do we want to do? Do we want to we want to get this patch conics and things like that? We we could improve this. This gives us patch conics and costs 50. Um, it takes a while to build. So if we actually look, it's going to take, it's probably going to take about 300 days to build. Um, it's up to you if you want it. You don't actually need it for doing the orbital launches, but you may want to get it later on. So I'm not going to get it at the moment. You may want to look at upgrading these things, but they're, you know, it's excessive. Right now we're looking at what do we want to actually upgrade first and what we're actually going to do is buy some upgrade points that's what we're going to do we're going to spend it we're going to take almost all of it i'm going to take it down a long way we're going to take it down to let's see oh yeah seven thousand left oof that's tight we're going to have to fund our other rockets and things like that from that seven thousand but whoop should be okay so we've got vab we're going to take that up to ten and then every one of the other points we're putting into R&D until we get it up to 25. It's now well in advance of the VAB. So we've got another seven points to spend. Let's see how we're looking. You can see we've also got, uh, yeah, we've got um, <clears throat> mission control and the launch complex are now down to, uh, you know, a, a reasonable amount, 140 days. Our vessels, this, this one that we're building is 80 days. So that means if we put another one up or we do something similar size, that's gonna finish when we can take another contract. So we know that we're actually on the sort of right sort of right path with that. This is our, our pathway for our science at the moment. So we've got, um, let's have a look. <sighs> that's almost finished. We've got 20 days for that, 40 days for that. So you're looking at 60, 60 days there, another say 50 there. So that's 110 and then 240 245 maybe and then basic rocketry it's 200 and well 250 with 300 so in the next year so by by halfway through 1952 we should have enough to actually put ourselves into orbit we could finish the orbital 
task. We could finish the orbital contract then. And then all we're going to be doing is racing to the next set of science. Okay, so we could just leave it like that. What I'm actually going to do though is I think we're going to uh, we're going to spread our upgrades around a bit now. So we've got 10 and 25. We're going to put, let's see, put one, two, three, four, take that to 15. And then R&D, we're going to put two more into. So 15, 27. We've got our R&D well ahead of our VAB now. You can see that time has dropped even more. Now remember, the later nodes take longer to do stuff with. So that material science isn't a lot. But later on, when we're actually looking at uh, some of the stuff, it's going to take a long time. Anyway, with that, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a montage now because we're going to do some different types of launch. I'm going to launch this uh, sounding rocket, show you how that goes. Then I will also show you my craft for biological and my craft for the camera missions. And the camera missions is a little bit different because I stick a biological on it, but let's uh, do that. And I'm going to show you those and then we'll basically whistle through and see how we get on. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to start saving money because we're going to need money for our orbital contracts and stuff like that. So most of the money that comes in now, we're not going to spend on anything apart from new craft. So I'm going to put some craft out. I'll tell you the dates of when they launch and things like that. And, uh, and you can uh, see what happens. Right, I've rolled time on. So this is our first launch that we're going to do, which is the Argon 3 sounding rocket we've already talked about. And it is the 11th of October in the first year. And I can actually show you that we have already now researched um, the first two nodes of rocketry, our first node of material science and our first node of early tracking systems. We're really moving on. So we've only got sort of, you know, two major nodes left until we can actually push for our first orbital launch. Now remember, as soon as you do your first orbital launch, however, you're going to lose your sounding rocket uh, missions. So you don't want to just do that and then be left waiting for this science to complete. So we need to, sorry, this science to complete. So we need to remember that. We're not going to push it straight away. Right, we're on the launch pad. We're just going to send this thing off straight away. There we go. Engine goes, launch. Now, We've launched this craft before with something else on the top. And what we have to remember is because we've got less mass on the top of this thing, it's actually going to accelerate much more quickly. And the problem we will have is we want to actually get it to uh, to to get onto that 45 degree angle. But because it's accelerating so quickly, we could actually end up with these fins just being blown off really easily. So we have to be very careful about this. This craft should be able to complete this mission quite easily, actually. We should be able to just pull it over and do reasonably easily. About 10,000, it's about 10 kilometers up is actually a danger zone for us. We get sort of max Q, but then beyond that, we also keep with that problem. We have to be very careful just edging the craft over bit by bit. Um, and you will find if you go too fast, you will break stuff because we're not using supersonic fins. If you want to actually make this easier, one of those early science points you could put in supersonic fins and really sort of really work it. Um, and you can see now we're, we're now going to be over the 140 kilometer mark. So we're not too worried. If we get down to 45, we, we should be okay. We're going to be fine, I'm sure. There we go. And we're now spinning. So we can see we have done 20 kilometers. And the big problem with this craft is, of course, it is not as um, stable as we would like in that upper atmosphere. So we're gonna speed it up now. Its weight is all over the place. We've got this heavy engine here, then we've got some payload on the nose there. And so it's, it's basically uncontrollable tumble. And you can see we're clocking up the distance. We need to be about 100, well, 175, 180, 200 when we hit our APWAPs it would be perfect for us. So let's actually have a look at that. We're gonna go up, we're at 100, got a bit more to go. Come on, let's just speed it up. We're actually above the uh, the atmosphere now, so we can just go along and you can see we're over 150. Yeah, we've done this easily, haven't we? I think, yeah, we've got this, got this, got this, got this. So we can just let this roll along down. Um, and you can see this is actually a much less efficient launch than the, uh, than the original launch we did for our 3000 kilometer because of the fact we lose so much of its, uh, its actual, it's actual thrust through air resistance because it, it just takes off so quickly. Um, what we can do is as soon as we go past our marker, we can actually just end this flight. Uh, there we go, do, 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 do. a little bit more, speedy up a bit, there we go. 
So there we go, finished, done. And then you can just range safety the vessel, done. Let's move on to our next one. Right, one thing I should have mentioned in that last one was that we actually turned on the telemetry and that allowed us to get a little bit of telemetry as we were going through the atmosphere and as we were in space. So that's something, because our 3000 kilometer craft didn't have its antenna on or things like that, we didn't get anything from it. We've got a little bit of, of, of science from there. So next, well, the problem is that, well, we don't have any slots. We can see these, these missions, but we can't actually accept them because we're waiting for our mission control to build. So the next step is, well, what are we definitely gonna need? Because we can start to build them up. We know we're going to need some low space biological experiments. We're also gonna need some low space film returns. So let's go build those craft and then we can start stocking them up. And then we can decide what we're gonna do with these. You can see these have got, you know, they're not even at maximum yet. So we can leave these for a while before we come back to them. So let's go look at these low space biological, low space film. Right, the first craft we're gonna look at is the Argon 2 craft. And this is Argon 2 Bio 35, which is my way of knowing that it's got 35 units of sounding payload on board and a biological capsule. The biological is actually in there. If you actually look, it's it's sort of recessed down with the with the uh, with the the payload partly around it, basically just because I think it looks nicer, it doesn't actually help the craft at all. So what this actually has is a parachute up here in amongst the decoupler and this this cone at the top here will actually decouple as well so we get a flat end and down the bottom here we have four engines and four four little uh, titan boosters these are just the whack engines though that we've not operated them we could actually operate them and this thing would be probably able to run on on one engine or, or two engines instead of four but this is something you can actually start building really early on if you decide to. You could even use it for your um, your first orbital return if you really wanted to. Um, you can see it takes 54 days to build. Um, so what I will do is I will set this up. What we'll do is first of all, let's just check. Well, we've got a bit of tooling there. So if we uh, if we look at it, when it's tooled, 38 days is wonderful. So we're gonna tool all of that. It costs us a bit of money, but this section here, which has the sounding payload in, can take 115 units of sounding payload, which is what you need for the largest of these missions. So what we will do is I will put together all three of these and put them in the build queue. And this is what I tend to do because they're not expensive. They're not gonna you know, limit us. We've got, we're not spending any money on, on upgrade points at the moment. We're gonna wait and see if we can get that money we need for actually building our orbital craft. We're gonna, we're gonna just spend this. So we'll, I'll get these three built in the upgrade crew and then I will show you the film camera craft. Right, here is the Argon 3C, which is our, our photo bio thing. So here you will see that instead of just having a solid lump on the top with our sounding payload, what we've actually got, and I'll reload this in a minute, is, so that I, I, I don't have to worry about the payload fairing or anything, is we have taken a parachute, we've taken a film camera, we've taken a biological uh, sample unit, and we've taken our, um, Basically, this is our science probe core. And we're gonna use the science probe core as like a, a, a sort of a, a heat shield. We don't really need it, actually. This craft just needs to go up and along a bit. And so this is just as a, a way of stabilizing it. So we've got all that weight there. We want this end coming down first. We've put the biological sample on because although we don't need it there, there's a lot of science to be got from biology in high and in high, um, high flying high and in high space so that's why that's on there so we're going to build two of these because um the craft is actually capable of doing everything we need we don't need a sounding payload on this it's just about downrange distance and altitude um you could push the third contract with one of these i have not i would normally only go to two because i think the money that you get back on it is just not enough at that point so i will uh, get two of these built with their fairings on um and actually, let's have a look. What's the uh, what's the cost of this fairing going to be? We can actually see. So to tool that is going to cost us six thousand funds, which is quite a lot. But that is the two fairing pieces and the avionics here, which I believe has changed. Has it? Ah, we've reduced the avionics. So this is actually a slightly smaller avionics than we've used previously. Um, but I will put all this up and we'll get it into the build queue, and then you can see what we're looking at. Right, so you can see that we have now got quite a lot of craft being built. And this is not the optimal way of doing it, but it's, it is a way of doing it. You can see we've got only about 12,000 funds in the bank. 
that's because we're waiting to launch these crafts so we should be getting money for each of these and you can see that in total we've got we've got quite a bit laid up there we've also got this argon 3 the 430 sounding rocket payload one that we started building um while we were rolling its its sort of sister craft out onto the pad so what we're going to try and do is we will move forward to the point where um, let me bring it up for you where this mission control is finished building you'll see that's 43 days that's going to allow us to basically build one of these straight off the bat and launch it and be part way through to the next at that point we'll be able to see what other contracts are available and whether we have a nice sounding rocket payload contract if we look right now these downrange ones for example they're uh, they're not paying brilliantly because they're they're nowhere near they're only at 72 percent of their normal fee so we're going to let them build up we know that we we want to do these three biology these two film that's the least that we want to do we want to do those five launches and how we space them out is really up to us we could put these ones in first i tend to put the biological in first and then put the film in after that and then intersperse that some of the sounding rockets but what you're trying to do is you're sort of killing time until you've got your your science done until you get to basic rock basic rocketry um once you get to early science you'll actually unlock an additional let me just check yeah i believe it's early science early science will unlock there we are the advanced biological capsule now that opens up another set of contracts that you can do you can also get additional science from it but it takes a long time it's designed for orbit really or just a long time in 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 the traveling shall we say it takes sort of, i think 24 hours or something like that but that's where we're going to be so i'll launch one of these each to show you but in reality what you're doing is you are making the decision and you're probably going to be looking at launching these five plus maybe three sounding rockets before you're ready to go for your orbital launch because you don't just want this tech finished you want to get the other tech so if you think about it over here we have this satellite era research and this to do so we've got these two that need to be done and that's going to be 17 points so we need another 12 points now of science to do that we will get that from the biological and the photo samples and the return craft and all the stuff that we're going to do we're going to get all of that so let's launch a couple of these and um and then we'll finish off this episode right mission control has just finished we've still got our launch pad being built but mission control is finished so we can now accept one of these contracts and we can make a decision and we're actually going to go for the biological one but you if you notice that you had a really nice thing here so for example this one is um 370 units of payload for 350 kilometers downrange we know we actually have a rocket that we could do for that but again we could let it roll up again it's only 120 percent we might as well wait until we finish this next launch because we have craft ready so we're not in a hurry for that right here we are with the argon 2 with its 35 units of sounding payload and its biological experiment this is a, a craft i always find very interesting to launch and you'll see why in a minute if we just fire it off and then there we go not so much so then but what you tend to find is that it sort of self stabilizes it's almost like if, if it starts to wiggle off if you get a problem with one of those those boosters at the start um, and it's off center it will actually self stabilize which is a wonderful little trait for a rocket to have and you can see it's uh, it's gone up now it's also we've got an engine fault already which is going to impact us but this craft is actually able to self stabilize when it loses one or two engines so we don't need to worry about that we do have an engine fault we're only trying to get up to 100 kilometers we want to go a bit higher than that actually this craft this craft would prefer to go higher so we're going to aim to go up to 140 150 160 ideally um, before we do anything again we've got the the um, radio transmitter on which we don't really need to have so we're now over the limit of what we need i'm going to keep pushing it and i'm going to see where we can get to there we go okay 130 so we're not going to go to space today that's annoying that actually is a negative for us because we're not going to get as much science as you'd probably like what we can do is though we can just get in here we can actually in fact you know what we'll use the proper way of doing this if you actually have a look at the craft let's have a look 
Um, where's our data? Yep, we are sampling away, that's nice. Um, and we've got pressure scans and temperature scans going on as well, which is absolutely superb. If we actually click on the core, we'll see they're running. Wonderful, telemetry is not needed, we've got all that. So we're gonna start getting more science in, that's good. We're gonna keep an eye on that. We're gonna, of course, not get all of it until we've actually uh, recovered the craft. So what we need to do is arm the parachute, number five, and then we're gonna let this ride on up. And when it gets near to its uh, apwaps, then we're going to actually do its little party piece, which I think is what really helps this craft more than anything. So it's it's going up there now. And of course, because we're going inland, we're gonna be getting pressure and temperature data from, I believe, is it forests and things like that that are, are classed in here? So you get a different biome of that. It is a pity, but if we have to have an engine fault, this is the one to have it on, I think, not one of the later ones. So there we go. We're going to decouple the nose. And now we've got this flat end. That's the decoupler that you see there. And that flat end with these fins at the back will hopefully allow us to go back through the atmosphere and slow down quicker than if we had a pointy end. That's the idea anyway. We can either go tail end first with those engines and the fins, or we can go this flat end first, but there is no, no easy aerodynamic sort of flight for this. So we're gonna just let this accelerate downwards. And I'm gonna show you this one uh, just now, and then we will not show you the other biological ones. I will actually jump past them, and then we'll do the same with some of the others. So you can actually see the, the progress that we make. I'll do some jump cuts and things like that. But I wanna show you this craft in action. And what you can find is if it gets a violent uh, a violent sort of re-entry, this section will sometimes break off. The fins may break off, but this section, the, the nose, the biological sample, all of this will not, will stay together is, is what I've found. You could put another decoupler up here if you wanted, and you could actually separate the whole craft off and not bring all this back down. Um, you could probably save on the weight of parachutes and things like that as well, but I don't think that's a major a major sort of problem. You can see it's it's accelerating down while it's in the thin air, but as soon as we get sort of further down, there we go, we're starting to slow down. Now you can see that nose, that flat nose, is going to just act like a bumper. It's gonna just stop everything that's going on. There you go. So it's slowing it down quite considerably. The fins are getting a bit warm, but they're gonna be okay, I think, because we've not managed to get to, or to uh, suborbital height with this. So there we go just gonna slow down nice and gently and just in time we're gonna think about deploying a parachute or two there we go and the fins go at that point because of the aerodynamic forces as they swing around and then this craft is just gonna go down so we'll uh, let this thing unfurl itself you see there it's slowing down too well, well, that's a little bit too much parachute isn't it so I'll take this down to the ground and I'll join you back in the main screen so that has come back and because we did a, a, a flight into the upper atmosphere we get a little bit of science for returning the craft because of course all our other craft apart from first launch went suborbital so we've actually not had any other sort of high flying craft return so we get a little bit of science for that which is quite nice and um, we get some science for the biological samples that we got back so that's good and uh oh, and a little bit more cash back so we can actually now go and put science into this there we go so now all we need is another three and a half 3.6 science and then we can get our final piece of tech so we can now see what sort of timeline we're looking at and you can also see i've got the kerbal alarm clock up so we've got 836 days and uh, yeah we're, we're pretty much on target we're probably looking at another 100 days or so 120 days after this so one two three for maybe 500 days worth of research at the moment if we don't do anything else if we don't upgrade anything else 500 days worth of research we're going to have days and days and days to to do these buildings we can actually start building uh, our uh, our first craft if we need to to go to go um orbital before we do our scientific one so we're, we're doing fine here so looking at our vessels We've got a few options now, and now we've like unleashed the ability to have a contract again. We can now look back in here. So what I will do is I'm gonna do a little uh, montage and I'll put I'll speak over the top of it about which missions I choose and why, and uh, we can then watch the cash grow up and then we'll end the episode with that. So let's get going. 
Right, so first up we have uh, our sixth launch of the series and this is a biological capsule with sounding rocket payload, 75 units of it and this is going to go up, this is on the 28th of the 12th, 1951 um, and this gave us enough science to get to the final Geiger counter node that we needed and it gave us a bonus upgrade, which we then get to put into our R&D. And you can see as this comes down, we get a nice little, there we go, the fins burn off, parachute will deploy, whoop de doo all the way down, nice and quick. And we're still just about finishing off 1951. So that launch is done. Now we need to get some more cash, don't we? So on to the next one. And the next one is on the 5th of February 1952, and it's exactly the same as the previous launch. It's another biological sample up into the atmosphere. We've got to go up to 140 kilometers. We actually go above that. And uh, we have another 115 units of sounding rocket payload. This one goes into the uh, into above the, uh, the atmosphere limit, so we get a bit more science from that. Um, we do actually get a little bit more science from it as well, which is very nice. We get a little bit more science. We uh, we get the interesting bit because we've gone a little higher and it's a little heavier that when it actually deploys its parachutes, we rip the engine off. But that's that's not a problem. After that, we then have another launch. This is launch number eight, and this is our film return canister capsule thing. And so this one's got to go up to 100 kilometers and across sideways 200 kilometers. Got to go 200 kilometers downrange. And this is on the 19th of the fall. 1952 um, and we're going to use this uses an Argon 3C and I, I will put that in the uh, in the relevant links so you can actually have a look at that and again we use the um, we use the the control core to basically act as a heat shield because well why wouldn't you it goes well over the top of it and um, when we complete this one we actually end up with enough cash to actually build our our orbital rocket we could actually uh, stop stop at this point and do it but i make a decision to do another one because i want a little bit more science so this one comes down nicely parachute deploys we finish this one all well and done lands in the water then we jump across to our next one we're just going to repeat this but the next mission so this is the 28th of the 6th 1952 and this is 50, 150 kilometers up and 400 kilometers across and we, we make this one easily this is the second of the film canister ones um i would not do the third with this rocket and you see it does get a horrible spin they always seem to get a horrible spin because the engine basically gives up so low down if you then get an upgrade engine much better um this one you know the tumble does cause a little bit of problems and it comes down the wrong way around now that's a one in a million shot when you're going through it but it then resorts itself out now that that return the wrong way around if we were going a bit faster could be a problem luckily not so much for this because we've not we're not hit massive issues so at the end of that you can see all the science have got all the money and we're ready to vote next time go into orbit so join me next time have a great one